It's time we had the talk. Yes, the talk about female armor. Often we see armor for women in fiction is depicted more aesthetically than practically. Sometimes it's so close to the body and so form-fitting we wonder how they could even get into it. Nevertheless, how it could protect from anything. Now, when we speak about this and talk about how you can design your armor for female characters to be practical, and also ways you can add more feminine touches to its appearance while keeping it practical, we're going to be using this great resource from the Lazy Warlock over on Reddit. Though I wonder how this warlock could be lazy when they make such a well-made work that's so well-researched. And now, even though this work focuses on the medieval aesthetic, this could work for whatever aesthetic you want. The basic principles are the same. And now when we focus on this, we're going to be focusing on the cuirass or breastplate, which is that part of the armor that covers from your shoulders down to your navel. And it should stop around or just above your navel as to allow you to bend. As if it does not, it will jab into one's stomach or into their neck, preventing their breathing. And you do not want that. Now, first of these is the classic shape. This is a domed breastplate that domes out furthest at the base of your rib cage. And there is the widest. This helps to deflect blows away from the body and to give space between the body and the armor so that there's area for it to compress. And also, it is smooth so when it gets pushed back against the body, it spreads the force off across the entire torso. And this, if more of a medieval aesthetic, like a late medieval, will be more pronounced dome. But earlier breastplates, like ancient Greek ones, had a more flat body. But that flat shape is not good when people are swinging war hammers and pole axes at you. That's why a flat breastplate with plate armor is not good. Those are for before those medieval styles. Now, uh, going beyond that, we can go to a one with a more feminine aesthetic, something that wasn't very common in history, though there are a few examples of armor with this upper design, which is the raised dome, where the dome of the breastplate is more up at the upper chest, where it domes out further. This still works, and since it won't dome out too far, we shouldn't get too much in the way of people moving their arms. And this will could give a more feminine aesthetic to the armor, though not necessarily will it. It also provides more room for women who are more well endowed, as one does not want armor crushing up against their body. But that's one way you can do it. Now moving on beyond this, we can move to the reduced dome, which this is like the raised dome, except for it has a more convex curve to it, meaning the curve is more inward and out, which could be less effective at deflecting blows, but should still be sufficient at deflecting blows, and will still work great and give even more of a feminine aesthetic to the armor. Beyond this, we move to the more shaped armors, like this shaped armor, which is shaped more like a garment, like a shirt, or a tight-fitting dress will fit over the woman's body. This armor, it is still relatively effective, though it could have some problems, as where it bulges out to represent the bust. The base of that, that could, when it force impacts, that line along there would be pressing into the body. But if it's done smooth enough, it shouldn't hurt too bad when it in the body. And it covers a large enough spot of the body that it will be spread out the force, even though it has a focal point. Now moving on beyond this, we get what is often joked as the boob plate, or the true breastplate. That armor that takes the shape of the female form. Now this, if done by itself without any back plating, it will have the problem of those indentations in between the two breasts, or on the edges of them, pressing into the body when impacts occur. This will lead to sharp painful pressing into the body, which will still be better than gaining the weapon into your chest, but it will hurt, and so for, uh, is not the best as it focuses the impact into those areas. But that can be resolved by building it on top of another breastplate, as like having one maybe the raised or reduced dome, or even classic dome, and then placing another plate, a decorative plate, on top with that shape, whether of hard metal or of a soft leather, so that it can be bent and does not get in the way of one's movement. So maybe, if you really, really want that 
boob plate look without it being impractical. Have them wear a normal breastplate, but have on top of that, they wear a decorative plate, maybe of a hardened soft leather, that gives that shape, but there does not hinder the design of the armor or weaken the design of the armor. Though interestingly, if it is made of a soft piece on top, that decorative part, a blade could get caught in it, but not into impacting the force as it would still slide off the breastplate behind, but cut, stuck through the leather, which could mean you could capture the enemy's blade and then lop off their head and rip it out. But that's a different question to ask later. And such things as this did exist for in history, as we have the pectoral muscular armor, often worn by Greeks and Romans for parades and stuff, but that is more for display and more for ceremony. It is less practical because of all the sharp lines in it. Often it was made with thinner material. Though there is one example also of this of a female one from India, though it's most likely ceremonial. And of course, it's from India. Now, moving on, when we have armor and we want to look nicer, you can have differences. There's ornamental armor and ornamented armor. Some armors are purely meant to be worn for prey or for speeches. They just look good, but really wouldn't be practical. Maybe it's made to look like the human body, to make it look like I am made out of metal. Like some very ornate forms of the Greek and Roman muscular armor that was so ornate that really was only worn for parades, as it wouldn't be practical in battle, as it had to be too close to the body and the sharp angles with focus points into the body. Though even wearing that is better than not having any armor, but it still has those sharp points to stab into your body. But you can add ornamental stuff to the armor, like decorations, like neat curves, a slight sloping into the armor, or slight smooth lines in it to make it look nicer. Or as I even mentioned before, you could add things on top of armor that won't affect the real armor underneath, but add a look on top of it. Like as I mentioned, that decorative leather bust on top of the actual breastplate that one could add. If they really want that, and if people care, maybe their culture admires the appearance of the human body, so wants to display that look, or maybe the characters are just that vain or arrogant that they want to display that look. Now, moving on past that, there is also a different type of armor, which is known as the Kestenburst. This is a type of plate armor where the folds from it go down in full loops, down even to the knee. That is further than normally they would go, and this actually existed. And you could modify that design somewhat and make it armored dress, and have your women who are warriors run around in armored dresses. And it would work, as such armors did exist, like this example. And that's all different ways you can design your armor for female characters to be more practical. And ways you can even keep the aesthetic look to it and give it a more feminine appearance. And so I would recommend looking at this great resource from the Lazy Warlock and take this advice along with you when you design armor for female characters in your art or in your world building or whatever it is. Like and subscribe.